So let us go ahead now and study what is entropy and what is the quantitative relationship it has with heat flow Q and temperature T. So in the earlier lessons, we spoke about some processes that move in the direction of increasing disorder. Well, irreversible heat flow also increases disorder. And as an example, if you mix hot and cold water, the well sorted molecules in hot and cold glasses are no more sorted due to the mixing. And when thermal equilibrium is reached, that sorting cannot be re-established into hotter and cooler regions. So in essence, adding heat to a body increases its disorder since it increases molecular speeds and therefore the randomness of the motion of molecules. Now, free expansion of a gas also results in increased disorder since the molecules are in a way more free to move around in let's say a larger space and therefore you get more randomness or let me put it in this way that molecules can be anywhere in the largest space available to them so a higher element of randomness so change in entropy has a close correlation with the amount of disorder that gets introduced in the system and we will say that entropy gives a quantitative measure of the amount of disorder. So let us say we bring about an infinitesimal expansion in an ideal gas and we do so by adding a very small amount of heat dq just enough so that the temperature of the gas does not change. Well we know that the internal energy of an ideal gas depends on temperature only so we can safely assume that there is no change in the internal energy of the gas. So using the first law of thermodynamics, dE is equal to dQ minus dW, we can say that the work done by the gas dW is equal to dQ or the heat added. Then since we have assumed that the temperature to be constant, we can say that dQ is equal to dW is equal to PdV which can be written as equal to nRT upon V into dV. So if you rearrange these two parts, what you get is dV upon V is equal to dQ upon nRT. So if we agree that a gas spaced out in a larger volume enables the molecules to wander around more, then any increase in this volume should increase the randomness of the molecules. In that case, any fractional change in volume can mathematically represent this increase in randomness. Well, we see that this fraction is proportional to dq upon t. So we now bring in a symbol s that represents entropy of a system and we say that the infinitesimal change in the entropy ds during an infinitesimal reversible process at a constant absolute temperature t as ds is equal to dq upon t so if the total amount of heat added in a reversible isothermal process say at temperature t is q then the total entropy change can be given as delta S is equal to S final minus S initial, which should equal Q upon T. Now, if you think a little deeply about this formula, what you will see is that it really gives a sense of increase in disorder. So if the substance is cold, you can expect minimal molecular motion, but if we add heat Q, we can cause significant fractional increase in the molecular motion and therefore randomness. But if the substance is already hot and then you add heat Q, you will get relatively smaller increase in the molecular motion to what is already existing. So you see at low T values, change in entropy Q upon T will be higher than at higher T values. So the next question you should ask is how do we measure entropy change if the temperature also changes since 
So far, we have considered temperature to be constant while finding change in entropy. Well, we can find the entropy change in any reversible process even if it is not a constant temperature process. When the temperature changes, all we need to do is to consider the process as a series of infinitesimally small steps where quantity dq is added to the system at absolute temperature t and entropy change is then dq upon t in that step. We then add the entropy change in all the steps to find the total entropy change. And as usual, we make use of integral calculus to find the change. So we can write delta S is equal to integral of dq upon t from i to f where i is the initial state and f is the final state. What you must note and this is very important is that when a system moves from an initial state of entropy say Si to the final state with entropy Sf, the change delta S in the entropy has no dependence on the path that the process takes when moving from initial state to the final state. And this is true because entropy is a measure of randomness of disorder in a system in any specific state or Let's say in other words, it just depends on the current state of the system and is not affected by what happened in the past. So you see that way it is much like internal energy of the system, which is also uh, dependent on state of the system, but entropy and internal energy are two very different variables. Well, while we have been constantly considering reversible processes for calculating entropy changes, we can also measure entropy changes for irreversible non-equilibrium processes. However, the equations we have discussed so far will not be applicable. So to find entropy change in an irreversible non-equilibrium process, all we need to do is find an equivalent reversible equilibrium path that starts at the initial state and ends at the final state of the irreversible process for which we are trying to find the entropy change. Once we can establish such a path, we can find the entropy change as well. And again, just to remind you, this calculation would be right since entropy is a state matter and does not depend on what happens in between the initial and the final state. So let us try to use this theory to establish what is the change in entropy of say 2 kilograms of water when it is heated from 0 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade. What's given is that the specific heat of water is 4190 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So we clearly realize that putting cold water on a hot stove and heating it to a boiling point is not a reversible process but we know that irrespective of the process being reversible or not, the entropy change between 0 degree centigrade and 100 degree centigrade would be the same. So we imagine the entire change in entropy from 0 to 100 degree centigrade in series of very small reversible steps where the temperature is say increased by dt in each step and we'll find entropy change in each step and then add them up and we'll make use of integral calculus here. So if the temperature is T, then the heat required to move the temperature up by dT is dQ is equal to mc into dT and therefore dS is equal to mc dT upon T and if we integrate between T1 and T2, we get delta S is equal to integral of mc dt upon t between t1 and t2 or delta S is equal to mc ln of t2 upon t1. And if we put the values in this formula, we find that delta S is equal to 2.62 into 10 to the power 3 joules per Kelvin. 
Well, this entropy change is positive, which it should be since we've added heat and increased the randomness of the system. So my question to you would be, what is the entropy change in a reversible adiabatic process? Well, in an adiabatic process, heat does not enter or leave the system. So dq is zero and therefore there is no change in entropy uh, here and delta s is therefore equal to zero. So you see every reversible adiabatic process is a constant entropy process and therefore it is also called an isoentropic process and what is happening is that the increased disorder that happens due to expansion is kind of cancelled by the lowering of temperature that reduces the molecular speed and the randomness of the molecules remains the same. You could think of the converse when the adiabatic compression happens. So let us now examine what is the entropy change in free expansion. Well, we take the familiar device where there is an insulated box and there is a partition between these two boxes so that there are two compartments each with volume V. Uh, at the beginning, one compartment has, let's say, N moles of an ideal gas at temperature T and the other has vacuum. Then we remove the partition and the gas expands, filling up both the chambers. So the question is, is there an entropy change? And if there is, then what is it? So we realize the fact that Q is zero here and W is also equal to zero since the gas is pushing against vacuum and therefore does no work. And therefore delta U is equal to zero as well and delta T then automatically becomes zero. So we may be tempted to say that the change in entropy is also zero, but that is not the case. The, the entropy does change since now the molecules are more spaced out and have a greater measure of randomness than before expansion. But since we know that free expansion is an irreversible process, what we will need to concern ourselves with is the initial and the final state to find the entropy change. So what we'll do is we will create a reversible path that has the same initial and final state as free expansion. And the path we choose is an isothermal curve where the gas changes from A to B doubling in volume at temperature T you can see that this path has the same initial and final state as free gas expansion, that is volume V and temperature T, and final state as volume 2V and temperature T. So in such a process, gas does work during expansion and drops in temperature, but we add same amount of heat, Q, as work done to keep the temperature constant or Q is equal to W. And we also know from earlier lessons that the work done in an isothermal process is W is equal to NRT ln of V2 upon V1 with V1 is equal to V and V2 equal to 2V. We have Q is equal to W is equal to NRT ln of 2V upon V which equals NRT ln 2. So we can say that the entropy change is equal to uh, Q upon T, which is equal to therefore NR ln 2. So let us now get back to the Carnot engine and try to establish what will be the entropy change in one Carnot cycle. Well, we can answer that question right away and that is there is no entropy change since entropy is a state value and if you bring the gas back to the same state, its entropy would not change. However, we will still do the calculation for entropy change and see there are some interesting outcomes to study. So in a Carnot cycle, we know there are two strokes in which heat either enters the system or leaves the system. One is this where heat enters at constant temperature Th and therefore entropy change is QH upon TH. And 
entropy of the system therefore increases but in this step we see that energy qc leaves the system and hence the entropy change is minus qc upon dc and it is negative since the energy is leaving the system and entropy of the system therefore reduces we can see that in other two strokes that are adiabatic there is no heat entering or leaving the system and therefore no entropy change so the total entropy change in the cycle is qh upon th minus qc upon tc but we know that this should be zero or we can say qh upon th minus qc upon tc is equal to zero or qh upon th is equal to qc upon tc now since th is greater than tc we must conclude that qh is greater than qc or less energy is delivered to the cold reservoir than is extracted from the hot reservoir which is kind of a mathematical proof of what we already know so for all cyclical processes the change in entropy is zero or integral of dq upon t is equal to zero for all reversible cyclical processes so if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos